Hey, 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 welcome to the Difference Maker Revolution podcast, and we're back with the five. So it's great to be here. And this week we're talking about effortless sales and how you can learn more about effortless sales. Well, let's just talk about effortless sales. So, Janine, what would an effortless sale be for you? An effortless sale for me would be a sale that doesn't take any effort, Ronan. <laughs> So, so, like, so like if you bought a lotto <laughs> ticket me. and you won the lotto, that was effortless. Is that what you mean? No, that takes effort. You got to go to the 7-Eleven okay. and buy your lottery ticket. Get out of okay. bed. Get up and do that. Okay. Take the effort. <laughs> Spend your dollar. <laughs> um, no, in all honesty, like for me, it would be when a client comes in for their ordering appointment, that it's just easy. That they, they, the the whole experience has gone the way you've wanted it, the way they've wanted it, and the sale is just an not an afterthought, but it's just almost a given. All right. So I think what you said there is an effortless sale would be it's easy for your clients, as well as being easy for you. Okay. Correct. It's easy. Okay. It's effortless. Okay. So Jonathan, were you thinking that effortless sales was just about being easy for? the photographer, the business owner, or were you thinking about the client too? I wasn't thinking about either, to be honest with you, but if now that you've posed the question, effort of sales, yeah, probably for me feels like it's super simple for the photographer to get sales. All right. So Steve, you're, you're the inventor of the effortless sales training. So, um, and the reason why I asked Janine and Jonathan first is Brad and I have done the training. Don't know how much of it I picked up, but <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> we should get you two before you go to me then. So, um, so, so that's why, why I mentioned that. So, um, Brad, what, you know, you've done Steve's effortless sales. So what was your biggest takeaway from effortless sales? Well, yeah. I'll, um, I'll, I'll start with this, and, and I, as I ramble, I suppose my ideas will come into my brain. Um, I didn't really pick up on the idea that effortless sales was called effortless because it makes sales effortless. I didn't really pick up on that until until years after, until maybe even Jonathan said it was, was a, said, well, what a great name effortless sales is. And I was like, oh yeah, like I, I didn't I didn't connect those dots. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I can I connect dots quite well, but I, I didn't connect that until Jonathan actually said it. Um, and, and I suppose effortless sales does make the selling process. Um, I don't, 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 don't use the word effortless, but it makes it more um, streamlined, makes it easier. It, it removes decision fatigue, um, but both, both from clients and and from you as the photographer or you being the person that sells. So I suppose that's that's my strongest takeaway is that it eliminates decision fatigue. Um, so it actually makes decisions easier. You can make decisions quicker in the sales room, but both from your end and from the client's perspective as well. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's my ramble. Good stuff. There's a conversation. I'm not leading this. I just started it, guys. So anyone jump in at any stage? <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's the opposite, Ronan, of, you know, they say a confused mind doesn't buy, right? So if they're not confused. Well, I'm the creator. And for me, it's about creating a constant flow for the client that leads them to a conclusion rather than um, big decisions and helping clients make lots of smaller decisions along the way so that by the time you've even taken a photo, they they kind of know what they want. Um, and then a lot of the times when I'm visiting studios, um, there's lots of conflicting um, things in the studio that, are conflicting with what the photographers say, I want to sell this, this is what I love. But then the setup of the sales room um, or the way even where they position the client in relation to um, that product that they want to sell um, is in conflict. And so a lot of it is removing all of the conflicts and creating a flow um, that, 
makes it easy for the client to focus, make decisions, um, and be really clear about what they're getting. Um, I think if we're relying on a big sales pitch, especially these days, it just doesn't work. Um, so it's got to be lots of small decisions and everything's got to be in tune, leading the client to making those decisions really easily. See, when you say removing conflict, like I often think of conflict as the photographer, right? Because you have conflict when you're having conversations. When you say removing conflict for the um, the client, what do you mean by that? Um, sometimes um, I'll have photographers say, oh, my God, you know, I had this client and we did this beautiful photo and I, I got this incredible photo with, you know, of the six of them, I worked really hard to get it, and then all they bought was an 8 by 10 of it. But then I will walk into their studio and they've got family photos in 8 by 10s And so on display, they're presenting that exact problem that they're having when they put all this effort in um, to book the client and get them in. Um, sometimes to the conflict, a lot of the times too, the conflict is that... Um, what they what what they want uh there's too much distraction in the sales room in that um well let's take an example of the last year i walked into their biggest complaint was that the clients were price focused everyone's price focused everybody want everybody's uh, you know wanting a discount and i walked into the sales room and right on the coffee table right in front of the clients was um, all a list of packages with crosses through it and the new special for the month. Or, um, and then they had the payment plan. Um, obviously, whoever um, supplies them with the payment plans gave them um, some paraphernalia to put up. And it's right there on the coffee table in front of them, creating a barrier between the client and them choosing their photos. And so a lot of the times the problems people seem to have uh, is reflected in the studio t- in the studio too. So that, that's what I mean by it's conflicting. Well, the one thing they're complaining about is also something that is on display or in many cases a thought process that they've provoked because of what's out on display. Does that make sense, Janine? That makes complete sense, yeah. So am I correct in saying then that one of the key things that is covered at Effortless Sales is how to lay out your sales room? Yeah. Yep, the layout and design makes a massive difference. Um, I've walked into studios and purely moved around furniture, um, changed the displays, um, and set up that room and it has increased people's um, average sale by seven or eight hundred dollars without any sales training um, purely because we've taken away um, all of the things that confuse people um, and we've maximized the space so what what confuses people those conflicting messages where we don't want our clients to be client to be price focused but then we're putting a price list right in front of them before we even start. Um, or we want our clients um, to choose family photographs that will suit their wall space, but right in front of them, they've got an eight by 10 family photo. Um, things like uh, sometimes they're complaining that their clients, all they want is um, digital files. And the first thing that is right in front of them is their little thumb drive with this beautiful packaging. Um, and it's the first thing that the clients are seeing or the closest thing that's to them. And so then when the clients are thinking, oh, I've got all these photos, what am I going to do with it? And they're scanning right in front of them is the solution. And so they're asking for those digital files. So um, a lot of the times we create most of what we're getting from our clients. And it's about taking all those things away. But, of course, there's a sales process, and the sales process needs to be done um, in, a, in a logical order whereby it builds the client up 
to a conclusion, um, I find a lot of people that come don't have a logical order and the clients end up in a state of confusion and so it, they struggle to make decisions. So what might that look like? Like what, what should clients potentially be buying or what should we be offering to clients to buy? Well, we need to work out who our clients are and what do they tend to, where do they want to display their photos? And all of the products we have need to be solutions. So we had a lot of clients that have staircases. And so we had a collection that we put together specifically for a staircase. We did quite a lot of newborns too. And so um, a lot of clients wanted something for above um, a bed or above a, a cot, but nothing too massive because um, it was a nursery at that point. And so the, everything was quite petite in relation to the baby. And so we came up with a collection specifically for, for that. Um, so depending upon where clients say they want to display their photos, usually the sofa, above a bed, in a dining room, staircase, coming up with those solutions for specific products um, makes it easy for clients to decide you know, for, the, for them to hear, this is perfect for a staircase, that's what they're looking for. This is what most people will get for above a, a queen-size bed or a king-size bed. Um, that's what they relate to. What they struggle with is when we ask them, how big is your space? Because most clients don't know how big their space is, and then they think they have to go home and measure it before they can make a decision. And so that's when we start to influence our clients believing that they can't make a decision today and they have to come back on another day to make a decision because by asking them how big is your space, not many people know how big their space is. So I'm going to make an assumption here, but the assumption based on what you said is that people were selling wall art. Yeah. Well, we, we, well, we're finding solutions. And for those people that don't, I don't do wall art. I don't have photos of myself on the wall. Um, you have to find a solution for that too. And so having beautiful product like a portrait box, um, and we've often sold two portrait boxes to many clients. So you need off the wall products for those people and you need that. It's just another solution, Jonathan. There's solutions for above a bed, a couch, um, a solution that's going to look incredible on a coffee table or on a sideboard. And that's where those um, portrait boxes um, and those sort of products go. Can I be controversial? That's not like you, Ronan. So, <laughs> so, so one of my <laughs> biggest learnings from Effortless was like, I love the portrait box. I have one here behind me because we, we make these portrait boxes and I love the mm. fact that it's on display, right? But here's yeah. why I love wall art more. Is that a strange thing for the owner of 3XM solution to say? Um, <laughs> the the, the, no, the reason why more. I prefer wall art is that we all know that the work we do is about making a difference to our client. And we all know that the yep. emotions that are on display in their home make a difference to them every single day. And for me, wall art on display is doing that job more often, in my opinion, than a folio box or an album, because most albums get put away. So, so staying true to that, the big thing for me for Effortless was, yes, the folio box has a massive role to play, um, but the, the wall art has a role that's bigger, in my opinion, for most people, when the work that we do is about being a difference maker. So there's some controversy for you. I'm sure my marketing manager in 3XM has gone, what is he saying on that podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a question now because I've seen this a lot. So if the focus is on selling wall art, I hear that the more images that we sell, the more money we make, right? So how do I get the clients? How do I like take 
500 images from that session and get them to whittle it down and choose the most amount of images possible to maximize my sale. So, 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 so that sales approach is about making it about the photo. That sales approach is making it about the photographer. That sales approach is making the assumption that our clients, that this is all about our clients valuing us and our art and our photography. And that sales approach is, oh. and that sales approach is about a hard sales tactic. And that sales approach is actually about bait and switch. Oh, so do I not show 500 images in a sales appointment? <laughs> Maybe for a wedding. <laughs> oh, Jonathan, ah. you're so cute. So how do I make more, how do I like, what, what causes these higher average sales and bigger sales if I'm not selling a bigger quantity of images? It's about finding out what really matters to your clients and um, creating wall art that matters enough to them to want to invest in exactly what Ronan was talking about, um, that wall art. And that doesn't diminish the possible sale of a, um, a portrait box because if it's their favourite photo and it's on the wall, that it should be the first one that they want to keep in their treasure box, um, which that's what we used to call the the, um, uh, the portrait boxes, the treasure boxes, because um, it's their favourite photo. It should be one of the ones that's included in there. And obviously, you know, that they might have, you know, on average, most people were putting in our studio about 22 to 28 photographs in their portrait boxes. Um, and a, a collection is normally four to five photos. And so... Um, we would uh, encourage them to put all their favourite photos, once they've chosen their favourite photos, into into that portrait box. As well as, you know, we would be selling wall art first and we would always sell wall art first because it's the biggest decision and they need to um, be fresh for that. And it's the one that only requires them to choose five photos. Um, when Brad was talking about um, decision fatigue, if we start with the portrait box first, um, sometimes they're already at decision fatigue because they've had to choose their portrait box first. So by the time it gets to um, choosing their wall art, um, they're decisioned out. And so it's too big a th commitment for them if we do it the other way around. Okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate one more time. I'll stop using banned words like images. I was only doing a fair to fun, you know, <laughs> just to see your reactions. So if I, a 10K sale, people talk about 10K sales all the time. So my, what, like how many photographs, how, how, how many photographs typically would a client have to buy and what would they be buying for you to have a 10K sale? It depends on the need of the client. Um, that could consist of two to three collections, depending upon how you're priced. Um, usually it would consist of maybe two collections and a portrait box or maybe three collections and a portrait box. So it depends on where people are priced. Um, but usually the, there is a couple of um, wall collections and, and a portrait box. I was just going to ask you to clarify because I think there's a lot of people in the industry I find they use the word collection to describe their packages. So just oh. can you explain exactly what a collection is? Oh, a collection for me is a wall grouping where we're creating um, a story and, and a, a collectible collection for a client and it's a wall grouping that we put um, a few photographs together to tell a story and it's displayed in one location in their home. As opposed to a package is um, you're creating a, a set, this is what you get for this amount of money and you need to fit into that box that I've created. And I believe Brad's seen this also, but one of the most mind-blowing things I've seen is that I've seen you create a collection 
like four pieces with one single photograph that was taken. Yeah, by recropping and culling. And I think this is where um, it becomes a bit effortless becomes effortless is when you know how to crop and cull and you know how to um, position the photographs within um, one of these collections and it makes it really easy to sell because clients love it. So I don't need to show a whole heap of photographs and sell no more quantity <laughs> to increase my sales. Wow. Mind blown. You've got to think clients don't have our capacity to take in that many photographs. So once you've shown them 30, 40, they're kind of maxed out. If you push it to 60, they're, they're tripping out. They're not used to looking at huge um, volumes of photographs. Um, and I think a lot of the mistakes people make is that those photographs that they're showing people are also sometimes a bit too similar. And then the clients, when they think, when they, we might think it's completely different, but to a client, it's too, it's similar. And they then start to look for um, similar photographs and they start eliminating because in their mind, why would you get two of the same photo or two that are very similar? Once you train a client to look for what to eliminate, they're in a process of deletion. And the more you train somebody to be in a process of deletion, the better they get at deleting. And so what they end up with at the end is never as valuable as um, never as valuable in their mind as when they are choosing what they love and choosing their favorites for two very different things. And the intention is key. That was under learning I had the intention about that every photo they love is going into the folio box. Straight yes. into the folio box. Straight so into the folio yes, box. We're, <laughs> we're, 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 we're selling for not just any folio box. Not just any folio yes, box. We're selling right. for the wall. But then every photo that they love out of the 40 or so that they see that they love is going in the folio box. And and Where then, else would it go? But if m most photographers who who do the bait and switch selling process, which I'm we're now going to call it the bait and switch selling process, that the um, that that in, intention is not there. You know, it's it, it's a distillation mindset of, you know, here here here's here's three expressions. Which one do you prefer? You know, it, that, that was mind blowing for me is that you're actually asking someone to choose something about themselves they don't like. And then you're wondering why they don't want to buy. Like that just blew my mind. There's so much in effortless. You, you don't. There's you never so want much to do in effortless that. that you will learn that all piece together that when you understand why mm. we're truly in this, should be in this industry, why, in fact, can I be really controversial and say that in my opinion, unless you become a difference maker, if you're a photographer's photographer, you don't have long left. That's what I'll say. There's my controversy. You don't have long left. <laughs> oh my God, you're of, bullish today. For a whole <laughs> what did you reasons. eat for breakfast? Uh, because I've been strategic. I, I do a lot of strategic modeling, as you guys know, and I know you guys do too. And we, we all have a strategic brain in, in the Difference Maker Revolution. But when I see, I like to, for me, there's some mega t trends that are colliding right now. And when I analyze those mega trends, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but there is an increased risk of it happening where when we make it about photography, where in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, when you couldn't have a photo that meant something to you without going to a photographer, that those days are now gone. They're, they're gone. They're, they're, so if you keep making it about the photo, you're actually like a turkey voting for Christmas. I have no idea I'm what you just said. Turkey. You're a what? A turkey voting for Christmas. <laughs> oh, you don't eat turkey okay. Christmas in America. You're like, Thanksgiving. You're like a turkey. <laughs> I was like, so that's a good thing because the turkey's voting for Christmas no, no, so he doesn't sorry. get slaughtered. Yeah, for, the, for American friends, <laughs> it's like a turkey voting for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I was so confused. I was thinking about my European brain. I'm sorry. 
Janine and all of our American friends. <laughs> yes, so it's like a turkey in Europe voting for Christmas. It's like a turkey in the US voting for Thanksgiving. But and it's, or it's like a fish in Poland voting for Christmas. Oh. In fact, they eat... It's just the British Isles, Ronan. Well, it's mostly just the British Isles about Turkey on Christmas. So, so you think it's British brain there, my friend. I need yeah. to do that too. Commonwealth, well, Dave. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're Brits. You're Brits that were exported, right? <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but my heritage is Italian, so we have lasagna. Right, well, do you know Break the Polish the actually have their Christmas dinner on Christmas Eve? Most continents the Europeans do. Yeah, most continents the Europeans do. Fish is favoured. They, they open do. presents on Christmas Eve as well, which is which is madness to us, isn't it? That's just insane insanity. But yeah. I have a, I have another story to tell them wow. about how, how effortless sales can tell. So, so when you look at effortless sales and when you learn the difference maker and then you do um, empower as well that that workshop, you'll see how strategically everything connects. And I was in a studio some time back, and the photographer was showing me around, right? And all the photography on display was family outdoors, right? And this photographer did in-person consultations. And he wondered why, when he couldn't photograph outdoors, why he'd no clients. He was telling his clients, they were telling their, their clients that you have to wait for spring and autumn and summer to be photographed. Because that's where what all the photos were about. Photos in the fall. Yeah. And that's, Janine, you know, when you say that, you know, things conflict, um, a lot of the times what we put on display conflicts with the message that we actually want to say to our clients. And so it's about aligning everything when we're building the studio. It's really important. It's one of Brad's favourite favorite things on cause and effect, you know. There's cause and effect to everything. So say, same with this, right? Yeah. And, and Steve, when he teaches this, he says, this is common sense, but as we all, as we all know, common sense is not very common. <laughs> Right, Steve. So when I go to the next effort this workshop, what are you going to teach me? What am I going to learn? Heaps. I think what you're going to love is the cropping and culling, Jonathan, because you seem to get blown away every time I do some cropping and culling um, and how we take a photograph and um, make it look even more appealing to a client. Um, so the, there'll be that aspect. Um, and then through every step of the sales process, uh, when to sit, when to stand, um, how to pick your decision makers, where they need to be seated um, and where you should be sitting in that room because a lot of people um, it's, are also sending conflicting messages because of the chair that they choose or where they sit in the room in relation to the client um, sends conflicting messages to the clients too. So just making sure that everything is in alignment. That's the fun bit. I love all that bit. So I get to learn how to run a sales session? Is that what you call them, sales appointments? No, it's a design consultation, Jonathan. We're designing wall art for people. We're not, and, you know, designing what's going to go into their portrait boxes. So it's, it's not a sales session. It's a design session because we're helping clients design what they would love to display, either on the wall or with our off the wall products. Right, makes total sense. Are you excited now, Jonathan? Yes, very (laughs) excited. More excited than ever before. So the one thing, the other one thing I want to point out is that I think one of the reasons the effortless comes in is because we're allowing clients to buy what they love. And we know from what all the work that happens before that with the discovery calls and with the multiple discovery calls with the photographing, we know... Uh, and understand what's important to our clients. So we're photographing for what they like and what they want and not what we think looks great. (laughs) So I think that's what makes it effortless because when we are showing clients what they love and describing the photos using their words uh, and what it means to them and allowing them to see what it means to them, then they're buying a piece of themselves. They're buying for themselves. So they naturally want it and we don't have to convince or persuade. Yeah. What we do, we need to make it so delicious that they just want it and just make it easy for them to make a decision. 
So everybody, if uh, we know you want to know more about this, there's two ways to know more about this. The first one is to join the inner circle. So make sure you click the link below and join the inner circle. And then so many of us just love to learn in person too. So we have a, Steve is delivering an effortless sales workshop coming up soon. So check out the link on the website and sign up for that. So from your Difference Maker Revolution team, it's goodbye for now. Thanks everyone. Bye everybody. Ciao Bella. <laughs>